In this channel, we've been talking about the many ways that scammers can find vulnerabilities on computers and phones and hack them. But one thing that hackers love to exploit more than your iPhone is our human nature. You might be confused, but what I will do is introduce you to something known as a social engineering attack. Basically, social engineering attacks happen when hackers exploit the human element to break into your accounts. To give you an idea, experts say that in 2021, cyber criminals use them in 98% of attacks. And the price tag? Nearly $7 billion in losses. With so much at risk, what should you watch out for? Well, in this video, we're gonna talk about the types of social engineering attacks that are out there, their red flags, and how to protect yourself. So to start off, there are eight main types of social engineering attacks. The first is called phishing, and it can take many forms depending on the target. For example, basic phishing is very general. One message could be sent to countless people. In contrast, spear phishing targets specific individuals, and angler phishing targets an individual's social media information. All of these phishing attacks have one thing in common. The scammer pretends to be someone you trust, a customer service rep, a family member, your bank. It doesn't matter. Anything so you drop your guard. And they often try to create a sense of urgency. Then with your guard down and your anxiety up, they target your information. They may ask you for it directly, send you a form or a fake login page, or try to download malware onto your device. The second type is called tailgating. This one is a bit covert. Scammers will literally follow you into work or into your apartment building. They could just count on you being a nice person and holding the door, or they could dress up as maintenance or delivery workers. Once in, they can spy on people access workstations, or check names on mailboxes. They could even try gaining access to company devices. Third is a technique called pretexting. This is when someone misuses their role to gain information. For example, an administrator could demand your login information, counting on you being too scared or respectful to refuse. The fourth type is a pretty big one, business email compromise, or BEC. This type takes three main forms. Number one, scammers pose as employees or trusted vendors. Then they ask for sensitive information, request to change payroll details, or ask for fraudulent payments. Number two, hackers gain access to legitimate business emails and use them to spread malware company-wide. Number three, scammers scan inboxes for an active threat. Then they send a malware-laced reply. Since it's in a current thread, an unsuspecting victim could open it without a second thought. Type number five is called the quid pro quo attack. It means a favor for a favor. In this attack, scammers offer you something like a free trial or a gift card if you try their software. This gives them an easy opening to send you malware or collect your information. Next, number six is known as the honey trap. In this scenario, scammers develop a romantic relationship with their victim online and convince them to send money, gift cards, or pricey gifts. The seventh type of attack is known as scareware. Basically, a pop-up email or message on your computer says something to scare you into downloading malware or paying the scammer. It could say, for example, that your computer has a virus and you need to download software to uninstall it. Lastly, the eighth type is known as a watering hole attack. This is where scammers target you through a site you use regularly. They could cause the site to redirect you to a fake login page. They could even cause malware to download on your device as soon as you visit the site. Now, there are some red flags you can look for to avoid these traps. For example, scammers typically create a sense of trust or urgency. So slow down when you get a message and make sure you know the sender personally. Then carefully check the message, the email address, phone number, name, and the text itself. But besides knowing these red flags, you need to take action to protect yourself. Having antivirus software, data monitoring, and a password manager is a big protection. If you're looking for one, Aura is a great service that takes care of all of that and more. I'll put the link below for you. So that's it we're human and we can slip up. Scammers know it and they will try and take advantage of it. But don't worry, if you make sure to keep educating yourself on their tactics, you'll recognize them. And if you protect yourself with cybersecurity, you can rest easy knowing that someone's got your back. This has been another cybersecurity update with me, Upton. Make sure to subscribe for more and let me know below if someone's ever tried to pull off one of these scams on you. I'll see you in the next one.